Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I understand the hype around Anthony Joshua. He's unbeaten. He's knocking everybody out. He is an Olympic gold medalist. Right? I understand people really value that Olympic gold medal. Right? Joe Fraser, Olympic gold medalist, became heavyweight champion. Same with George Foreman. Same with Lennox Lewis. Same with Vladimir Klitschko. I understand that that gold medal often is a stepping stone for greatness in the pros. Right? Here's what I want the people who keep you know, leaving comments saying, hey, when are you going to talk about Anthony Joshua? Here's what I want them to realize. Right? That amateur boxing is different than pro boxing. It really is. The skill sets are different. Right? Two of the most dominant fighters I have ever seen in my life are Roy Jones Jr. and Floyd Mayweather. Neither of them won Olympic gold. Right? I view the Olympics really as a lot of politics involved. Right? If you if you look at the scoring for the final in that London Olympics where Joshua wins his gold medal, just look at his match, the finals. You're going to have to ask yourself if it's 1818, how exactly was Joshua awarded the victory? Right? Let me say this. In my opinion, there are three heavyweights, and then there's everyone else. Right? Vladimir Klitschko to me is the king of the division. Why? Because. He's the guy who went out, won the title, and has fought credible opposition. Right? Maybe there's somebody better than Vladimir Klitschko. The point, though, is he's the guy who's gotten it done. Right? Speaking of guys who might be better than Vladimir Klitschko, another guy in this group of three to me is Tyson Fury. We're going to find out in a few months whether that's right right Tyson Fury of course is unbeaten and then of course we have a guy who Vladimir Klitschko beat Alexander Povetkin right Povetkin just destroyed Mike Perez Povetkin beat Carlos Takam great fight Povetkin has been quite frankly on a tear since losing to Vladimir Klitschko his only loss a fight that went the distance right then there's everyone else now with all due respect to Deontay Wilder who like Joshua has a lot of KOs has started his career in unbeaten fashion has Olympic jewelry was a bronze medal winner right with all due respect to him and with all due respect to Anthony Joshua I think it's way too early to even consider Joshua to be a major part of the heavyweight landscape. You have too many credible world-class fighters out there with resumes for me to suddenly think that Joshua, who's been, you know, figuratively speaking, beating up milkmen and truck drivers right to consider Joshua to be one of the elites let me say this I was expecting a hell of a lot more from Kevin Johnson a lot more from Kevin Johnson but what's the difference between this fight where Joshua walks him down and every other Joshua fight right there are too many questions right now with regard to Joshua for me to feel that he deserves a title shot. For me to feel that he's an elite contender. Let's go over some of the questions. Right? 
And I believe these are questions that need to be answered because these are questions that will be posed to him if he fights any of the top three at heavyweight. And in my book, that's Vladimir Klitschko, Tyson Fury, and Alexander Povetkin. Let me give an honorable mention here. This guy's on the cusp. Let me give an honorable mention to Lucas Brown, who's on the rise. Okay, let me say this. With regard to Anthony Joshua, do we know if he can take a punch? He certainly didn't get hit with one in this Kevin Johnson fight, right? Johnson's on his back foot. Johnson gets hit hard. Johnson barely makes it out of the first round. Johnson, you know, the ref finally decides that he's going to help Johnson out with his quality of life, go, you know, down the road by stopping the fight in the second round. But understand, right? We haven't seen Joshua get hit with a big punch by someone like Vladimir Klitschko. We haven't seen it, right? Do we know whether he can take a punch? I would say we don't, at least I don't. If he can't take a punch, how would he survive against the big three? Let's ask another question. Because you know the Joshua fights, right? He's walking on his front foot, right? Guys are backing up. He then throws these short punches and guys hit the canvas, right? I've just described the vast majority of his career. Do we know whether he can fight on his back foot? Right? I'm telling you, some of these fighters are not going to concede the pocket to him. Right? If he fights Alexander Povetkin, understand, Povetkin was aggressive against Vladimir Klitschko. That's why Klitschko had to clinch him several times. Now, if Povetkin is on his front foot against a heavy puncher in Vladimir Klitschko, why wouldn't he be on his front foot against Anthony Joshua? A guy with far less experience, far less experience experience right didn't Vladimir Klitschko win the gold medal in the 1990s folks and so my point is this if Anthony Joshua gets flushed from the pocket do you know if he can fight on his back foot right understand if he can't that might reveal itself early to his detriment in a fight against the elites let me ask another question that people need to figure out. Can he slip a jab? Heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko has one of the best jabs in boxing. Tyson Fury can jab you with either hand. Right? These are long jabs, folks. These guys are big. I know Joshua 6'6". But understand, Vladimir Klitschko can touch you with the jab from distance, and it's a sledgehammer Carlos Monzon type jab. Can we agree that if he can't slip the jab, if he's like Calvin Brock, a guy who Vladimir Klitschko knocked out, right, had a great record going into the fight, had a problem slipping Vladimir's jab, if Joshua can't slip the jab, isn't he in trouble? Let's talk about something else. Right? Folks are getting all hot and bothered over a fighter who has never had to answer the bell for the fourth round. Think about that. Right? Do we know if Anthony Joshua has stamina? Folks, Vladimir Klitschko has gone 12 rounds. Tyson Fury has gone 12 rounds. Alexander Povetkin went 12 rounds against Vladimir Klitschko. Right? With Anthony Joshua, you have to ask yourself, wow, can he go six rounds? He hasn't yet as a pro. Can he go seven rounds? Aren't we a far way away from knowing whether this guy can go 12 rounds? You know what? Everybody looks good. Stamina-wise in the first round, in the second round, in the third round, everyone looks good. 
That's all we know about Anthony Joshua, isn't it? Let me say this too. You know, Joshua seems to walk up on guys and then hit them hard up close, right? Guys are backing up against him. Guys end up up against the ropes against him. Do we know if he can deliver power from distance? Right? A guy like Vladimir Klitschko, sometimes that right hand seems to be coming from the front row. He has that much ring coverage. Vladimir Klitschko doesn't have to be close to you to hurt you and to hurt you badly. Right? Educate all of us, YouTube Nation. Direct us to the fight where Anthony Joshua is way outside and throws a punch from halfway across the ring. I'll agree he has the reach. Does he use the reach to deliver power shots? Right? If he has to get up close to you to hurt you, isn't that going to be a problem against the Vladimir Klitschko? Let me say this too. Most of the guys against Joshua are in retreat, aren't they? Right? They taste his power. It's like, whoa, whoa, kitchen's a little bit hot. Let me go into the next room. Joshua follows them into the next room, takes them out. Right? Do we know if he can defend himself against an aggressive fighter? <laughs> you know, that first Chisora Tyson Fury fight, there are moments where the two guys are just practically leaning on each other. Right? Very aggressive. Right? Neither guy is there dancing around the ring. They're very aggressive. Right? Alexander Povetkin, very aggressive. Have we seen a guy that aggressive against Anthony Joshua? If we haven't, how do we know how he's going to react? What about this, too? Can Joshua handle clinching? Isn't that a Vladimir Klitschko trademark? Doesn't that throw off a lot of fighters' rhythm? Right? Povetkin couldn't handle Vladimir Klitschko's clinching when they fought. I get the feeling the rematch would have a different dynamic. How do we know that Anthony Joshua can handle clinching? You could be a dangerous puncher. If the other guy has ways to grab you and prevent you from throwing those dangerous punches, what's your plan B? What's Anthony Joshua's plan B? Now I hear that Joshua is a chess player. I mean in real life. He plays chess. He's a guy into strategy and stuff like that. Maybe he has a game plan for the fourth round, the fifth round, the sixth round. Maybe he has a game plan for guys who force him to leave the pocket when he has to be on his back foot. Maybe he has hidden upper body movement where he's planning on dodging a jab and coming back and coming inside and being a Mike Tyson type. Maybe all of that is true. The point is we don't know whether any of it is true. We've only seen this guy in three round demolition contests. I give him an A plus for beating up Kevin Johnson. Right? Kevin Johnson was overwhelmed, no question about it. The way he beat up Kevin Johnson is the way he's beaten everybody else up. Right? We'll need to see far more than that to place him with Vladimir Klitschko, Alexander Povetkin, and Tyson Fury. We'll need to see far more than that to place him with David Hay, Carlos Tackham, Tony Thompson, Kubrat Pulev, Bermain Stavern, Glasgow, Splinka, Malik Scott, Derek Chisora. In other words, the heavyweight waters are deep, folks. This guy is just starting to swim. Let me tell you, too, everybody seems to have a lot of knockouts early in their careers when they have a punch, right? Don't they? Don't you build up that high KO percentage early in your career? Only one guy has gone the distance with Deontay Wilder, and that's Bermain Stavern. Let me say this, too. Now, people here online know I've been hard on Deontay Wilder. He is the heavyweight champion. 
right? Or at least a heavyweight champion. I have no doubt that Wilder can hit you from distance. Because I've seen it. Right? I saw him, you know, knock out Audley Harrison from distance. We, we've seen him hit guys from way outside. Right? He doesn't have to get too close to you to do that. Let me say this, too. I still have questions about Wilder's stamina. I know he went 12 rounds with Bermain Stavern. Bermain Stavern is on the slower end of foot speed in the heavyweight division. Right? I'd like to see if Wilder could go 12 rounds against, let's say, a Tyson Fury. Right? A Steve Cunningham. I still have questions. Let me just say this, though. And I'll give Wilder this. While I know that Wilder can hit you from the next room, I don't know that about Anthony Joshua. I don't. Because Joshua tends to walk you down. He's not in the middle of the ring hitting you from across the street. Right? So just understand as many questions as I have about Deontay Wilder, I have an equal amount of questions about Anthony Joshua, if not more. Right? I've seen Wilder in the ring against Stavern, against Malik Scott. Right? Heavyweights who've been around. I haven't seen Anthony Joshua in the ring against that level of competition. Right? So, before we put a crown on the head of Anthony Joshua, before we call him the next big thing at heavyweight, can we at least see him tested in something other than a fight that goes three rounds or two rounds? Right? Can we see him against the heavyweight who's actually going to force him to fight on his back foot? Who might actually force him to deal with a lot of clinching? Right? Who might actually force him to slip a jab? Right? It's too early in Anthony Joshua's career. I give him credit on being the first man to stop Kevin Johnson, right? I give him credit. He looked tremendous. Johnson is battered in that fight, right? But let me tell you, if you look at the film of that fight, and if you just take Johnson out of it and put in any of the other opponents the guy has fought, it's the same fight. The difference between a fighter on the way up and world class, right? A fighter at world class is at world class, even great fighters have to go to plan B. Have to go to plan C. Have parts of their game taken away. They can't fight the same fight every fight. Right? Right now, Anthony Joshua is able to do so. Because he's not fighting yet in the big leagues. Right? I'll agree. Kevin Johnson has been in the ring with big league guys and on his best day is a big leaguer, right? I agree he got beaten. All I'm saying is he didn't force Anthony Joshua to show us anything we haven't seen before, right? Johnson's up against the ropes. It's not high-level stuff. Right? In my opinion, the jury is still very much out on Anthony Joshua. Right? Don't look at a 100% KO ratio and then assume that this guy's Gennady Golovkin. He's not. Right? We're just finding out about him. He really remains untested. It would have been different if Johnson would have come out, flushed him from the pocket, forced him to deal with you know, a good stick, a good jab, right? It would have been different if Joshua would have had to have dealt with some injury, right? Closed eye or even a cut, right? None of that happened. Instead, Joshua on his plan A was able to just blow out Kevin Johnson just like he did the opponent before him, the opponent before that, the opponent before that opponent. Right? Jury's still out. I can't 
I can't call the guy elite or even promising until I see him deal with some adversity. Let me tell you, you know what they call the guys who survive car crashes? They call them winners. Right? I'm telling you, success is really a process. One of the reasons why Vladimir Klitschko is an elite fighter is because he lost to Ross Purity. It's because he lost to Corey Sanders. It's because he lost to Lehman Brewster. It's because he had to retool his game. It's because he had to change his corner. It's because he had to change to Emmanuel Stewart. Right? It's because he had to think about how he approached his sport. Right? What's helped Tyson Fury, quite frankly, is getting decked by Steve Cunningham. Right? My point is, it's the adversity that makes the fighter. Right? Roy Jones, Floyd Mayweather didn't win Olympic gold. Right? Here, Anthony Joshua looks like a newbie to me who hasn't really had to deal with adversity. Right? It won't be until he does that we'll be able to truly judge him. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.